Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome. It is time now for the ramble, which goes from now until uh, midnight Eastern time here in the United States of America. If you're anywhere else in the world, check it out. If it's uh, if it's uh, ten o'clock, uh, shortly after ten o'clock, well, ten o six in uh, the uh, city of New York, uh, then uh, adjust for that for wherever you are in this world and you'll be able to tell whether we're live or not. If we're not live, well, it's still going to be a good show anyway. We're going to have a good time. A little bit later, we'll be talking with our uh, citizens panel. I was going to be uh, presenting uh, an old friend, uh, Will Durst, tonight uh, uh, as, as our interview for the evening, but unfortunately... I got a uh, note from him this morning saying, hey, Alex, I'm sorry, I got a cop out on you, I'm sick. You know, I've had, I had bubble sick once when we were doing it, and I had, uh, now I have uh, Durst. Everybody's got this thing, whatever it is, this crud that's going around the country. Some people are getting it worse than others. Others, other people are just getting a cold, some people. Other people are getting uh, the actual flu. Now, here's the difference if you want to know whether you got a cold or whether you got the flu. If you're sneezing, if you're uh, choked up, if you've got congestion, and you got to blow your nose all the time, that's probably a cold. The way you can tell if it's a cold or not, take your temperature. If you don't have a temperature or it's just mildly elevated like 99 or something, you do not have the flu. However, if you put the thermometer in your mouth and your temperature is like 100, 101, 102, eh, you're in pretty bad shape. You got the flu. If it goes down to the three, get yourself to a doctor. You need something. You need something to help you along with this thing. People are dying of this flu within like three days. Somebody, some, I saw somebody on television tonight who uh, didn't buy Tamiflu. You know, Tamiflu is this... Uh, is this drug that uh, miraculously, if you take it within two days of coming down with the flu, will at least lessen the effects of it, okay? If not, just take care of it once and for all. Anyway, oh, so there are notes coming through on my phone. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, it, everybody thinks they've got the flu if they're just sneezing and you're feeling kind of, you know, and uh, that's, it's, unless you got a temperature, you haven't got the flu. But if you've got the flu, do something about it. Anyway, she went and she got, they didn't buy the Tamiflu because it was 116 bucks, And uh, she didn't come down with it. She didn't come down with it until a few days later. And then uh, they went to get the Tam, tried to get the Tamiflu and the pharmacy was all out of it. And three days later, she died. So I don't want to be a bummer here, but, you know, if you feel like you have the flu, go do something about it. See your doctor, see a doctor, see several doctors, see every doctor that ever existed and do something about it. Babies are dying. Uh, adults are dying. Uh, but it's uh, and, you know, and, and luckily I have not gotten it. And part of the reason is I never go out. So, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't meet with people. And when girlfriend comes home, I put on a, 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 a gas mask to protect myself. Because she, she travels on buses and trains to come home. And that's got to be something bad. <laughs> okay? Anyway, so that's the, uh, that's the uh, gist of it. And uh, speaking of sick... I'm not sick tonight. I'm feeling okay. And my eyes are tearing a little bit because I tried that stuff again that makes my eyes not have, see, not have bags. Can you see that? There we go. Uh, not have bags. Um, uh, and uh, it, it kind of burns a little bit and it's making my eyes tear. So I, I got to stop using that stuff. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, so I... Um, 
we finally did it. We finally got rid of our old um, uh, uh, thing. Mon uh, you know, our old uh, uh, thing. How am I going to tell you this story if I don't tell you what it is? Uh, it's not a thing. It's uh, the um, we, uh, health insurance. That's it. See, my wife at work had, uh, had health insurance through her company who took out a, and there are only like four people. It's, it's, there are a lot more people in the office that she administers, but in the actual company that she belongs to, uh, which is Citic uh, Partners, uh, which is owned by one of the biggest banks in China, uh, she uh, got, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we simply had a uh, health insurance through her. Now, what happens is, because we're both Medicare, and because there are only four people in that office, we use Oxford, which was this thing, this, this medical plan, um, as our secondary. But they, you know, these insurance companies are thieves, okay? They really are. Or, or as a better term is the Jewish Yiddish term, ganifs, okay? Because what was happening is when you have Medicare, Medicare takes care of 80% of your medical costs. So what you need to take care of that other 20% is what's called a supplemental, okay? And they weren't offering supplemental insurance to her company for us. They were, her company was paying about $21,000 a year to insure the two of us. And quite frankly, I never, in. Well, in a year, we're coming up on a year in April. It was a, the calendar year. I didn't get any money from them. I think for one visit, I got something from them. But most of it had to come out of my pocket. All right? Uh, and it, because we had $1,000 deductible. And hell knows, you know, I mean, girlfriend goes to doctors a lot, so she eats it up. That means $1,000 out of her pocket thousand dollars out of my pocket and I never got to that point because number one 80 percent of my of the medical expense was already taken by Medicare all right are you following me on this thing so what's happening basically is we really all we needed was supplemental coverage so I get a letter from my union telling me that um uh, I am eligible for their medical plan, uh, uh, their senior medical plan, which would take care of the supplemental, okay, for me and my wife. And the cost of this is about $2,000 a year. That's like $19,000 less than her company was paying. So we looked at the whole situation and we said, we really should go to this other thing because at least, you know, they'll start taking care of stuff. There won't be so many out-of-pocket expenses because it's $250 minimum, okay? And 500 for the two of us. So um, that, that's no problem, all right? That's a no-brainer. Plus they have prescriptions and they have uh, uh, dental, $2,500 worth of dental a year instead of the normal $1,500. Uh, and let's see here, what else? And uh, optical, you know. So, and then all this for, I think it's $183 a month or $534 a quarter. Or, or anyway, her company is going to write the check on this stuff. And, it, and she's saving them a lot of money. What I don't get is how a company like Oxford, knowing full well that we were on Medicare, could like still charge $21,000 a year for insurance for us when they would never, ever have to pay anywhere close to that. You know, uh, the only thing that was really probably costing them money was when I was using the, uh, uh, you know, using the stuff for drugs. And on some drugs, they wouldn't even clear the drug, okay? So I had, to, I had to fight with them for it. All right. So we go to this new plan. And the new plan looks okay. You know, it looks fine. It's certainly better than what we had. But then again, death would be better than this plan that we had. 
So we signed up for it, and it starts on March 1st. The only thing that I feel uncomfortable with, and girlfriend doesn't because she's really good about these things. She, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Okay. Is that it's a different kind of prescription medicine thing they've got. Here's the deal. It's uh, something called, wait a minute, I got the name right here, Express Grips. You ever heard of that? I never heard of them. But apparently, uh, I talked to somebody and said, oh, they're a very big company. Here's what Express Scripts does. They, they handle all your prescription medicine for you. Uh, only you have to buy it basically from them. You have to get a three-month prescription from your doctor for your ongoing medicine. In other words, the stuff you take every day of the year on into eternity, you know, cholesterol-lowering drug, whatever. And uh, you order three months at a time, which I don't mind because, you know, I'm going to spend that money anyway one month at a time, all right? So that's not what's bothering me. But it's the fact that you gotta, you've got to go through, they, gotta, they mail you your, your medicine, okay? And you subscribe to it. And when, if I need an antibiotic or something, a doctor just writes a prescription for the antibiotic, and I go to a, a place that will take this thing. And that is not on, it does not have to be on the 90-day thing. But here's the catch. Uh, I guess a lot of people were bothered by the fact that they had to deal with this company and that they couldn't just walk down to a pharmacy and get their drugs, which you feel far more comfortable doing. Than, you know, I've got, you know, you heard all the times I've griped about how we get deliveries and they don't deliver because they don't even ring the doorbell. I don't want that, you know, when it's the end of the month and I need my drugs. So what they've got is you can go to a drugstore that carries this insurance, that does this insurance thing, and it's only, only at Walgreens. Luckily, I have a Walgreens, it's called Community by Walgreens, about a block and a half from me, so it's no big problem. But it's just the whole thing about it. I have to have my doctor now write three-month prescriptions, or he can probably write six months, or he can give me 12 months' worth or whatever, and then when I guess it's time for renewal, they simply let the doctor know, and they renew another three months. But what happens is I've got to use Walgreens now. I can't, CVS does take this particular insurance, but our union does not prescribe to it doing it through anybody but Walgreens. So thank God there's a Walgreens close to me. Or girlfriend's thinking of just, you know, having the mail, the drugs to her every, every three months, you know. So I'm going to see what's best to do, you know in that case, but I don't feel comfortable about it. Because, I, you know, number one, I've got one drug, Cialis, which I take, not for getting a boner, but I take it because it helps with my uh, uh, BPH, my, uh, you know, enlarged prostate, uh, and allows me to pee like a racehorse. And yes, there are other drugs that will do that, but uh, they didn't, uh, I didn't tolerate them too terribly well. Uh, so anyway, um, we, uh, where, where was I? Oh, so, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about the, uh, the, the thing. Okay. Well, I'm trying to do a few things here. So while I'm talking to you at the same time, so, um, I have to like get what they call a, uh, uh, what do they call it? It's an exception or something. I can't remember, uh, 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 um, an okay for this drug which they'll probably do because my other insurance, Oxford, did it as well. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, it's called, uh, oh, there's a term for it, and I've been using it for the last couple of days, and now that I'm trying to remember it, I can't. Something exception. Uh, and uh, so you get the drug, and um, you, uh, uh, you have all these exceptions to it and so on and so forth, and it's, it's good. It's terrific, yeah. So I've got to get that with one drug of mine, which I, I desperately need. So uh, I'm uh, nobody's chatting tonight. Why is nobody chatting? Oh well, hell with you. You're not chatting. Uh, so anyway, uh, I um, 
I, I, but I feel uncomfortable about this. I don't know why. You know, it's the old. It's really the old person in me that feels uncomfortable with it. Uh, if I were in my 20s, I go, oh, and so I got to send away for three months. Ah, okay, I'll send away, or I'll go down to Walgreens. I have one near me, and I'll just get the three months worth. It's no big deal. I'll call my doctor and tell him to do. This. But I don't get the concept entirely. All right. So I don't know if any of you out there have the same situation going. This is very strange. By now, there's usually people that are using the live chat on, uh, on, uh, on YouTube, and they're not using it. Hmm. Because I figured somebody would tell me what that's called. Um, anyway, let's see. Top chat, and I'm, uh, I don't want that. Okay. So we'll go to all messages are visible. Okay. Let's go to live chat. All right. But nobody seems to be uh, be writing anything, so I guess nobody wants to talk to me tonight. Let me just write something to everybody. Hi. Okay. There we go. I know it's working. All right. So anyway, um, screw it. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah. Um, so. Um, I, I just, I can't get used to this thing. And I know a lot of you probably do this. Uh, probably you have this particular service. Or most, uh, like Oxford and Blue Cross and all of them who do a, a pharmacy stuff, uh, have the same thing. They, you, can, you can do a 90-day thing and, you know, uh, they send you your drugs once every 90 days. And they call your doctor when they need a refill on the prescription and, it's all taken care of. So I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to do it. And um, I feel like, uh, I feel like, and then I go in to talk to, like, this place, this Walgreens, to ask them about it. And I don't even know what I'm talking about, okay? I don't even know what it is exactly I want to know. So that gets weird. Uh, and uh, so anyway, it's all this new stuff that I've got to got to deal with. Okay, listen, I, I I gotta reach back here. That's really nice. I should have gotten it before I uh, before I came on the air. I have a couple of items. I did a little. I did what uh, um, most people do, which is called prep. Only I never do prep because I I don't know what I'm going to do next on this show. I didn't even know that I was going to come on and tell you about that that medical thing, which lost everybody. They just went away. We just lost a ton of them. Oh, here we go. They say three-month RX is cheaper. Uh, that's according to Candace. Oh, really? Oh, okay. It is? Okay. If anybody else is doing it, I would love to know because I, I, they say it is cheaper. That they, um, Now, of course, uh, I know that Candace happens to be in Canada, so, I mean, you know, Candace, uh, you got it good up there. Anyway, where was I? Okay, so I got a story here. Where is this? I, I, I don't need that story. I'm going to do that story later. Here we go. Well, this is this is this is the one. I don't know how this showed up where I got it. I have this uh, site I go to, and they send me regular mailings and things like that called TV Week, which is all about broadcasting and what's going on and. I can, you know, we have things about prosecutors have three cases against Weinstein and Steve Bannon's new book, and it's all media stuff. And then there was this story, and I don't know why it wound up on TV Week, but it is it is the story that I wish this would happen to Donald Trump Jr. You know, Donald Trump Jr. likes to go to Africa and kill animals for their pelts. And... Um, let me listen to this. The mostly eaten remains of a man found over the weekend are believed to be the body of a poacher who was apparently attacked and killed by lions at a private game park just outside Kruger National Park in South Africa. All I can think about is the lions got even with him. The local Eyewitness News website reports that Limpopo police found a rifle and ammunition next to the body on Friday. It was reported earlier that authorities thought the body belonged to the driver of a tractor who had gone missing, but he's since been found alive. Local police spokesman Mochi Nagapi, 
hope I pronounced that right, because if I ever meet up with Mo oh, Mochi um, uh, Nagapi, uh, he'll say, no, it's pronounced Ngopi. Uh, anyway, uh, is quoted uh, in the media saying, it seems the victim was poaching in the game park and then was attacked and killed by lions. They ate his body, nearly all of it, and left his head and some remains. <laughs> You know, uh, I, I, can, uh, I can see one lion looking at the other lions. And, well, why aren't you eating the head? The head's the best part. Anyway, he added, we are now waiting for a person from the family, but we're also utilizing our investigative resources to see if we can successfully identify the deceased. I guess they might have, must have gotten some of his face because they certainly, uh, they got a head, but maybe they don't have a face. The Home Affairs Department's also working to help identify the man. I think that's a great story because I've always hated hunters and I've always hated people who kill uh, animals. Uh, it just always bothered me a great deal. And when I uh, read about this, I just said, you know, I can just see it. The lions are probably going, listen, the next time this son of a bitch comes back to kill us, we'll just turn, uh, t uh, turn the tables on him. And they did. And the guy is, is dead. Good. Good. Just let the remains stay there and rot. Let, the, let whatever buzzards there are left to eat to have their time. Okay? Um, Rob Alfano writes, although he might call later, it's cheaper here too. I've been using Express Scripts for about six years. Well, maybe if, if you can call tonight, Rob, you can explain it to me because... I just, you know, it, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of scares me. But I probably don't have any reason to be frightened. I probably am just fine. Uh, you know, it's just when you're old, you need your meds, you know. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Anything else happened in the last couple of days? Um, um, well, I'll talk about it tonight. But, it, you know, I, I have been on this uh, whole thing about the... the the Me Too movement, and how while I believe in, in the cause, I think it's kind of gone overboard now, and a lot of people who may be innocent are getting hurt. And the other day, the president tweets exactly that, uh, although he then went on to say a few other things, and all it turned out being was self-serving because of, of, of the people around him and also some of the allegations against him. But the sentiment was correct. It's like, you know, the stopwatch being right twice a day. Well, it happened the other day because in the first paragraph, he said that true or false allegations, you know, are ruining lives. I don't even think he wrote that. It was just so well written that I don't think he wrote it. I think somebody said, here, we'll write it for you and we'll just post it as you because we don't want to leave it to you to write it because you will then drive everybody crazy, okay? Uh, the rest of it kind of, I, I, and I don't have it here, it was kind of self-serving, all right? But that was uh, the, uh, the gist of it. But that was the big thing over the week. And uh, let's see here, anything else? No, nah, that's about it. I say we go to the uh, citizen panel, okay? Uh, because people are tuning out listening to me talking. I shouldn't do these talks anymore. I was, as I say, I was supposed to have uh, a dear friend, uh, our dear friend, uh, um, uh, um, oh boy, my mind is just so, so screwed. We were supposed to have a, a, a person to talk to tonight, and they got sick. So, you know. Where am I? Okay, let me turn. I just turned on the, the phone lines, uh, the Skype lines. If you don't know how to call this program, go to gabnet.net. You won't even have to miss the program if you're watching on video because you go over there, and it's playing there, too. Okay? How do we do that? Video magic. Okay? And you go over there, and on the right-hand side of the page is just a whole, a whole tutorial, very simple, on how do you can call this program using Skype. If you don't want to use Skype, at the very bottom, there's a phone number you can call. That, you know how to use the phone, don't you? Yeah. Okay. It's very simple. The only thing you won't have is the fun of seeing the other people in the group, and you won't have the ability to have people see you. But then again, maybe you're so ugly you don't want people to look at you. 
but our lines are open and we're waiting for our first caller to call us tonight and see who that is. Let's see, will it be Phil? Will it be Rob? Will it be Scott? Will it be nobody? And then I can go back to sleep when I feel like it. Anyway. Hmm. So um, our number here is, uh, if you have Skype, is Skype Live is our ID, okay? And the uh, easy way to, to take care of this is to go up to Contacts, go to Add Contacts, put in GabNet Live. Then I will receive a request from you uh, to make you uh, a contact, and I'll make you a contact, and that makes it very easy for us to put you in with the rest of the people. Otherwise, I have to go through a whole bunch of other Michigas uh, in order to pull it off. So anyway, I'm sitting here waiting for the phone. Oh, there he is, the first caller, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and uh, what does the first caller win? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, there, you got it. Took care of it. Uh, so, hi, hello, uh, Rob. How are you? That's Rob Alfano. So you have this uh, this Express Scripts? Yeah, I actually. Well, I don't have Express Scripts anymore. I have one called Optum RX now. Same thing. Uh, it is the easiest, cheapest way you're going to get your drugs. You don't have to uh, do anything. Your doctor is going to write you. Like for me, I have the Synthroid, right? I yeah. take my yeah. thyroid. So I it's, you know, every day. So uh, he'll do what, what, what they typically do is they write you the um, two or three. It depends on your doctor. Like they want to see me every six months. Yeah. So he'll write three-month prescriptions. and they'll, So it'll be one three-month with a renew. Yeah. And then I have to call the doctor uh, and say, okay, um, you know, I'm running out. Do you want to see me? What He goes, is everything okay? And then he'll renew it. Either I'll, he wants to see me or he'll yeah. have to renew it. But it um, they, said, they, they they get they, a. They, 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 I'm sorry, it doesn't come automatically. It just yeah. but you when I'm looking at my pills, I go, oh, I've got about ten or fifteen left, whatever. Yeah. I go on. Yeah. I, they have a nice app for your phone. Wait a minute, hold Wait on a second. I'm second. getting a slap Thanks back slap. here. Also, you might turn off your camera and start it again, Rob. For some reason, you're spinning. Let me oh. see now. Are we okay? Oh, there we go. There goes the slap back is gone now. There, no, that's your picture, and there you go. Okay, so what? Let me ask you. Wait, hold on a second, Phil. I'm getting medical advice from Rob. Uh, so, so uh, what happens is my uh, they call my doctor when it needs renewal, right? No, no. You, what what you do is uh, you you know like it like you do normally, right? You look at your pill vial and you go, I got 30 days supply. You look at your pill vial and you go, I got to get another. I got to renew this, right? Yeah, but you, you can go you online know, and renew it. Yeah, you go. I have a, an app for my phone. Yeah, and you go right to the app, and all, they have what they call the medicine chest, your medicine chest, your yeah. wife's medicine yeah. chest, and you just select whatever it is that you want to renew, and it'll tell you if you have any renewals or you're going to need to contact the doctor. Yeah. Right. So you're just going to press renew. You hit the button, and then if there's a copay or whatever, it's automatically charged to your credit card, and you get an email saying it's on its way, and then it just shows up in your mail. It's awesome. Really? It's really awesome. It's cheaper. Does it show up in your mailbox? I get, yeah, I get, oh, but, it's not wait. a delivery like uh, like FedEx or anything. It comes with the mail. Really? Mm -hmm. Son of a bitch. Well, you know, I mean, it's uh, something. Uh, uh, also, you see, the reason I could use Walgreens uh, is because they will do the 90-day thing. In other words, they you can either yeah. go online or you can use them. You get what I'm saying? Right. In, in other words, just, and the, the and price is as cheap as if you went through the uh, insurance company to do it. I tell you what, I, I it's just so easy. You don't have to you don't have to go anywhere. And you know what's annoying with especially with CVS is yeah. that fucking phone call that never ends. And that when, when when they call you the robo call you get from them, it annoys the crap well, out. I, I don't get a robo call from CVS. Oh, CVS always robo calls me. They see they they uh, um, they text me. Oh, I get a robo call. Either way, it's just annoying. It's like I know. Yeah. God forbid I don't like you know if you get a prescription and you you know you it's ready. I think you can turn. I get think, there. I, yeah, I think you can turn that off though. Well, maybe yeah. I don't know. Just now, if you have a singular thing like an antibiotic, you have to have because you have an yeah. infection. Th that you just go down to any drugstore and right. it takes this yeah. particular insurance and you know. Or if something happens, like for example, um, 
I'm about to run out of my Synthroid. I had to change doctors. I went for a physical this week, yeah. and tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., I have to be there for blood work. Um, and uh, I'm going to run out of Synthroid. So they're going to send a 30-day to my local pharmacy, which I'll go. It'll be the CVS here. I'll go pick it up. And then uh, they automatically send the prescription. You you know, you tell them I this is my prescription, and they automat- They know that. Everything is computerized. Mm-hmm. And the prescription automatically goes directly oh. to, to Express Scripts for so you. So in other words, all I have to do, all my doctor has to do is put, you know, this is, ref- this is renewable, this prescription. Yeah, well, it's like, just like any prescription, they usually put down on the prescription if it's renewable for how many refills you get, right? Well, they tell you how many refills you can get, and then it has to be renewed. And if it's renewed, and, and, then, and if I if yeah, I and then if I go online and, and I check renew it, they call get a hold of my doctor and get it renewed, right. and that's what so happens I've here had, too. I've had times where I thought I had another renewal, and I press the button on Express Scripts, and uh, you get an email from them saying we contacted your doctor. You need to call your doctor. They're not going to renew it for you. Okay, the but but but, but they, they but they do call the doctor and ask oh, yes. for the renewal. So oh, that yeah. is yeah. Well, I never have a problem that way. You know. Yeah, no, I have to go. They they want to see me. In fact, this doctor, mm-hmm. she told me that she wants to see me. The other guy was. Don't uh, you have the feeling though that your drugs are being held for ransom? <laughs> really, I'm <laughs> serious. Held for blood. They want blood from me in six months. And she told me, and, and the other doctor didn't do this. Anytime, like she told me, I had a physical the other day, and yeah. it was very no more no more finger up the ass, which was nice. Um, but she told me the way she works is um, that after I get the blood work, she'll know by tomorrow afternoon. Mm -hmm. And if I get a letter from them, then Mm -hmm. everything is fine. The Synthroid will be done through the, you know, the the automatic thing. And and I'll get a letter from them saying everything was great. She said, we will call you if there's anything else. So that's how it works. Wow. Wow. Okay. So what happens is, uh, he gives me like you know three refills for the 90 days right or the 90 days worth and then maybe another refill for that and then if it needs to be renewed i just say uh, uh, go ask the doctor to renew it and then they do the call they do all the that work they what yeah what they do is they they have a computer system that links into these companies they just send it they, no, no there's no phone calls yeah they send a notification to him that yeah, i need to, to have to it renewed scripts. yeah so, yeah, there's no phone call. Yeah, well, I just have to decide which way I want to get it. It seems more convenient to me to go down to the Walgreens to pick it up, you know. But how much money do you save doing that? I don't know what the regular cost is, but the uh, because I, I just don't. Um, but I know my company mandates that if you're going to have any kind of, you know, if you need a 30 day, pres- you know, a prescription for an antibiotic, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, but that's any yeah. recurring medication. You have to use the 90 day services now because it's cheaper. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, uh, maybe this will save me money. I don't know. It's yeah. just my co. I don't know if you have a copay or not, but I have like a ten dollar yeah. or five dollar copay. Well, it depends on the drug. Um, yeah, it, 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 it does. Uh, for the uh, if I have a high priced drug, it's twenty five percent of the of the um, of the cost of the drug is the copay. But on other drugs that are below a certain amount, it's like ten dollars. You know, uh, so uh, you know. But you know, you only have one drug you take, right? Yeah. Well, I was taking. Remember, I was on the. I would, for a while there, I tried the Cialis thing for the BPH, right? And then I was also on the. Um, well, that's the one that I'm going to have to get the exception for. You have yeah. to get a, a, I forget what it's called. Do you know what it's called, Phil? Uh, yeah, I think it is called an exception. Yeah. Uh, when you want a certain drug, whether they're not giving you the uh, generic. Yeah. No, 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 not, not, the gen- no not, not the generic. I'm talking about Just when a, a, a certain drug, they, oh. want, they want to go and you have to get an exception or whatever. I, I do the same thing at Kaiser uh, for the BPH. You get the Cialis. Uh, they don't want to give it to you, so the doctor writes, uh, you know, a, a note saying you you got a prostate yeah. the size of a baseball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now I don't I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it once I have the prostate torn out, but well, uh, you won't need it. Yeah. Well, you maybe. won't need it. <laughs> Uh, well, you might need it. For, uh, go back to Viagra. But like I was looking at a, at a form you have to fill out, and they won't give it if you just want it for hard-ons. Right. It, uh, yeah. You know, it has to be for BPH as well. It's and a different strength okay. anyway. 
Yeah, it's a smaller uh, strip. Yeah, they, well, uh, I was getting 20s and uh, cutting them in, into four. By the way, welcome but, to the old Codger show, folks. We're talking know, about boner thinking, pills now. You've got uh, a thing on the GabNet main page about how to get on Skype and, yeah. and so forth. Why don't you put one on about how to order pills? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I this, so this is a whole new world to me. You know, I usually I just got you know I went down to the store and I paid for the pills and I took them home. But I felt the same way you did, yeah. and uh, I didn't like it at first. But you know, now, you know, it's just so much easier to manage yeah. because everything is right there. The app is really easy to use. Yeah. it's on your phone. Boom, bing, bang, bong. You're done. You pick up your pills one morning. And you go, hey, you know, I've got ten pills left. Boom, boom, boom. You ordered it. Done. Well, this company says that at the end of the 30, uh, 90 days, if they have another prescription or they need another one, they call your doc. I guess they call your doctor and say, hey, do you want to renew this? And they just do it automatically and send it to you. You don't have to ask for it. You know, uh, that's what they the say about Kaiser is that they won't let you order until they say it's time to order. Right. So, yeah. Uh, and and they won't do it automatically. That's for one reason or that's another. Right. That's what the way it was with me. It was no automatic and they won't let you order it before. Like you can't order uh if if you're not close, they won't let you order it. Right. The other thing that bothers me is that, you know, like my pills might wind up costing me, oh, I don't know, uh six hundred dollars every three months. But I I'm paying two hundred dollars every month now. It's just the idea of paying the six hundred all at once kind of goes, uh, you kinda Take a deep breath in. And I, from what I hear, from this one guy at the at Walgreens said, well, it'll be cheaper. It'll be, it, it'll be cheaper. He said, not, not a lot, but it's going to be cheap enough that, you know, you, you'd be happy. Hello, yeah. Patrick. How are you? And hello, Phil. Yes, Patrick. How are you? Just dandy. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just talking about my new medical plan that I'm trying to get used to. And you can't go to CVS, uh, which uh, is owned by Aetna. And, uh, well, the CVS carries express strips. In other words, if I went there, scripts, if I went there to, for an antibiotic, for instance, I, I would be uh, just fine. Uh, they would accept it and all of that and whatever for like a one-time prescription. But for this 90-day plan, I have I to see. go to Walgreens because they administer that for uh, express scripts. And, and you have to lay out the dough before they reimburse you? Is that how it works? Is who, that what you're before saying who? It's 600 instead of 200? No, 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 no. This is for the prescription medicine. Her, right. her company's paying for the insurance. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, no, oh, oh, oh the, the 600 is the cost of the insurance. No, I, it's the no. cost of the co-pays on the pills. Yeah. Oh. So the co-pay is higher? <sighs> That's My, what he's paying so, now, well, 200 because, because I have that many medicines I'm taking and Cialis Correct. happens to be the most expensive one, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So, uh, you know, yeah, sure, I'm paying t about two hundred, one hundred ninety-six dollars a month for my drugs. I see. Okay, uh, but I've been doing that all along. Uh, but but I, that's cheaper than if I paid full price for the drug. Not to fuel this conversation more, mm -hmm. but you know, if you go on Cialis's website, you can get a two hundred dollar coupon. I know, once. so a great just once, once, once though, yeah. just once. Yeah, I, yeah, I've never used it. I'm I'm wondering if I could. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, it, it 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 it's you know, it's going to be fine. I'm sure I'm not going to die, uh, at least from this, but I probably will from something that Trump is going to do. It, give it a try, and if you don't like it, you just you go to Walgreens. Well, no. It, uh, no yeah, I'm. It's just I don't. You say it comes by mail, and I can they shove it all in my mailbox? Because if they can't, I've got these assholes. <laughs> okay, these fucking assholes that uh, the, at the local post office that are constantly going. Oh, it's I'm. I want to get home to dinner. I'll just say that nobody was home. You know. They don't ring the bell. They, they fit it in your, well, at least for me anyway, they just put it in our mailbox. Do you have a small mailbox or a huge mailbox? Um, It was like, uh, you know, like one of these, like one of them short ones with a door open like oh, yeah. this. Now yeah. it's, I have a regular mailbox, but. Right, so I, I, I guess they could fill, you know, prescriptions just, are small. They're just files. Yeah, that's all. Of course, they're 90 pills. Yeah, stole the small Do you know what we're vial. talking about here, Jeff? 
Let me talk to the other Alta Caca in the room. Uh, I take nine different pills. Yeah, but now, and how do you buy them? Do you buy them with these 90-day things from a... No, I don't. You, you get them once a month, right? I try to keep them down. They always want me to automate it. Yeah. I don't like to do it because uh, over the year, I usually add a couple of pills and take a couple away. And yeah. sometimes I find I had three months and it was because the doctor just changed yeah. change the drug or this one yeah. would be better or whatever. And now I got 90 pills. So what am I going to do with them? Uh, I don't blame They won't really you. take them. Now, back. if I wanted oh, no, they don't. If, if they don't take them back, if I yeah. wanted to use the insurance company, their, their thing, just send, have them send it to me. Okay. Um, how does he, how does he get it? Uh, does my, my doctor just send some prescriptions to the company, to the insurance company? Well, first of all, I, I I go everything through the one university. Yeah. Which, which means that all the doctors yeah. I go to. Yeah. And I think there well, must well, be but, well, no, seven. What, no, but what I'm asking is 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 uh, uh, Rob because he was doing uh, it. When you get your prescription, does your doctor then send it to the insurance company? Yeah, you never see it. In they other just words, ask you, you what's your preferred method, and you say Express Scripts, and they say fine. So when it, when you leave the doctor's office, if he's writing you a, a, like you know, I that's what well, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to call my doctor and just say send all my prescriptions to this place. Yeah, write that's up fine. a new one for all these places. They right. know how to send it to this company, I suppose. Right. It's all electronic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's electronic. Anyway, it's uh, it's fun. A lot of the doctors don't do anything. They, if they have a, a nurse, they might have the nurse oh, take care of Oh, I have a nurse who does all this at my I'm doctor's sure office. the doctor doesn't do it, but the doctor's yeah. office does it. Yeah. yeah. But it, it's uh, it's a kind of a, you know, it's a whole new thing for me. And, you know, at my age, I don't need whole new things. <laughs> I even have the card for the Walgreens here so that I can, <laughs> you know, go see them. They have these little things called Community by Walgreens, and it's not a drugstore. It's just a pharmacy. Hmm. That's all. That's all they do. Uh, so I feel kind of comfortable with that because I went in, there was nobody there. <laughs> you know, I did this long line like I do at CVS where I have to like uh, bring my iPod and hope that I have enough music in it to keep me, you know, my iPhone, enough music in it to keep me going while I wait in this line at CVS. Um, Kaiser. When I do have to go to the pharmacy, yeah, uh, has a blocking thing for your phone, so uh, you're unable to get on, onto the internet. Oh, uh, really? So, oh, if that's you fine. Find, if you want to watch entertainment on the phone, or if you want to, uh, you know, surf the web, it's just or, another boring service of uh, of, uh, <laughs> of Kaiser. <laughs> Kaiser, or uh, my friend Larry Bubbles Brown, best line of all time. He lost us. Kaiser is an advertiser with this line. He's done, he used to do weather on my show. Traffic. And uh, one, one morning it was brought to you by Kaiser. And he said, uh, uh, this traffic cast has been brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. Another name for doctor-assisted suicide. <laughs> yeah, probably not a good thing to say. <laughs> Next <laughs> thing we know, ring, ring, we're canceling. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> They're faux sense. Very sensitive. Yeah, they're a little, a little sensitive to the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I always believed in advertising that if we made a joke of Kaiser, and they canceled, they would look like a bad guy. But if they didn't cancel, they would look like a really good guy. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, what I used to do, I used to tell advertisers that would come on and want me to do a a live pitch for their product. Because I was known for selling a lot of product. Like I sold more Vermont teddy bears in one holiday season than anybody in the United States. And that included Howard Stern, who had a whole network of stations listening to him. And um, I did it because I would, in some ways, insult the product. 
Yeah. I would kid around with the product, you know, like uh, a Vermont mm -hmm. teddy bear, the perfect thing to get your girlfriend, the, the, the gift that keeps on saying, I'm sorry I had sex with your best friend, you know, yeah. things like that. And they didn't mind at all because all of a sudden the phones would start ringing in Vermont buying teddy bears. Alex, the teddy bear didn't work for that situation, I can guarantee you. Oh, you tried? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, tomorrow is the worst day of my life. Uh, I know what it is. What is it? Valentine's Day. That's right. Valentine's Day. It is the, let's be honest, guys, it is the holiday that strikes terror into the hearts of every male human being. If I don't get a card and flowers tomorrow, I'll never live it down. Exactly. Yeah. But if you don't get any flowers or a card. I don't get shit. You don't get shit. And she, she gets everything. Now, where was that written in the book? In the book. Yes, Patrick. The uh, little irony for those of us who are Catholic. Tomorrow is the beginning of Lent. That's Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, think about it. Uh, if you know anything about the beginning of Lent, you have to abstain from certain things. And there are some people that abstain from sex. Well, with Valentine's Day tomorrow, that's usually a pretty sexually productive day for a lot of men. Mm -hmm. So I doubt there's going to be many Catholics giving up sex this year for uh, Lent. Right. You know what Lent is in, the, in, the, in uh, Yiddish? What? It's, it's puch. It means uh, belly button lint. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who, who may not believe in Jesus and the risen Christ, um, Easter falls on April Fool's. Yep. Oh, so no. it's, just, it's, it's so it's ridiculous this year. So I got to put up with my atheist friend just ribbing me some more that, yeah, see, April Fool. Yeah. Do you care to share what you're going to abstain from this Lent? Uh, yeah, actually, I put it on Facebook. I, let me bring it up here. Why? You can't remember? Well, <laughs> it, it, it was well it, written. <laughs> extensive list. Wow, um, extensive list. All right, number one, walking. <laughs> <laughs> number two, hooking up with Craigslist honeys. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, getting and staying drunk 24-7. Yeah. Number four, streaking from my garage and back. Now, wait a minute. Is, are these the things you're giving up for land? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. And yes. number five, watching Battlefield Earth weekly. <laughs> number six, eating raw chicken. So There you go. Eating raw chicken. Yeah, I don't give in. I don't. I'm Catholic, but I'm I'm Catholic like some of you are Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> we don't take it to consider it perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I put the stuff on my eyes tonight, and it's hurting now. <laughs> the stuff, it's oh, like gritty stuff. Yeah, forget it. I don't need it. I, I I I just I just need a facelift, folks. Should I do a like a, a GoFundMe for a facelift? Why not? <laughs> you know, and say that you know, for your money, for your contribution, I will send everybody a picture. You know, gabnet bucks, gabnet bucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, but is it more of an insult if a lot of people give you money to do that? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, it's like, what are they actually saying to you? Yeah, you need this, Alex. Here's a. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Anyway, so so uh, where was I? Uh, uh, oh, did you hear that story I read earlier about the poacher in South Africa? Yep. God, I love that story. Yeah, I do. just love that story. I just imagine these lions sitting around saying, "He's back." Okay, you know, let's show him that we can run faster than he can shoot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and all they left, they, they left the head. Yeah. And I, as I said, I don't know why. One lion looked at the other and said, why did she eat the head? The head's the best part. You know, you know what? It might have been out of courtesy so that uh, it was almost like uh, one of them could mount it. Like, 
people mount the heads of animals. Mm -hmm. Maybe the lions want to mount the head. That, that, you know something? You could be right. Take it back to the den. Yeah. Hang I it know. up there. Yeah. Uh, but they, they don't have the art of stuffing down, though, so it might get kind of gamey. You know. But, no, no, but the fact no, is, they couldn't recognize who the guy was, so they probably chewed off part of his face, too. But. True. But, I mean, God, it's a great story. I mean, I, I wish that would happen to Donald Trump Jr. when he goes hunting. It's uh, Mardi Gras in uh, Louisiana. New Orleans. Yeah. Well, because uh, the last day of Lent is Tr Shrove Tuesday or something, or Shrove Wednesday, or is that it? Uh, Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday. Fat Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Fat Tuesday, the day before... Uh, Lent starts tomorrow on Ash Wednesday. Lent oh. starts tomorrow is Ash Wednesday. Okay. And then Lent goes all the way to <laughs> Easter. Now, is that when they put the ash on your forehead? Yeah. Are you getting that? <coughs> I, I haven't had ash on my forehead. In, <laughs> and it, uh, is it, let's see, 19, 1989. Is it ash? It looks like grease paint. It's ash. It's, it, ash. It, it, yeah. it's supposed to be it, palms. Oh, right, palm leaves. It, it yeah. burns palm leaves. It's the Palm Sunday is the week before, and supposedly they burn the palms for the following week for Ash Wednesday. So do they go to a store and buy a, a, a bag of this stuff? Some, does somebody make this stuff, some no, company? So they go to the fireplace. They take out a bunch of ash. No, they, they stick don't. In bag. No, they don't. See, when I first came back to New York, I had never, I had never. Uh, I'm not. I'm Jewish. I don't understand this whole thing. And all of a sudden, it's Wednesday, and everybody's showing up with smudges on their forehead. And I'm. I want to get on a the little, train. Right? I want to, you know, get a little uh, tissue and go. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's the funny you say that because I have a friend who grew up in Texas, spent his whole life in Texas. Yeah. And, you know, down there is not a lot of Catholics. It's mostly Christian and they don't do Ash Wednesday. And he would come up out of the subway on Ash Wednesday. He came into the office hysterically goes, I was walking around going, what the? Look, everybody's got dirt on their foreheads. What exactly. The hell is exactly. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, uh, you know, and of course here in New York, it's a big deal because there are a lot of Catholics. Yeah. You know, and uh, the Catholic Church has probably more, a he more a heavier presence here than almost anywhere in the United States. Uh, and that meant more molested you know, altar boys, too. But, you know, um, uh, but, uh, you know, it's just it's it's kind of weird when all of a sudden you see these people showing up with ashes on their heads. You also, of a sudden, realize some people are Catholic and that they're they're Catholic enough that they will get this schmutz on their forehead. I haven't that, done it since a teenager. That's the first time I've ever talked about Ash Wednesday and used the word schmutz. <laughs> yes, Jeff. Or well, I remember when I when I was going to high school, I used to be be on the subway, and there was a tremendous number of Puerto Ricans there. Yeah. At that time, who really just I don't know why it seemed like the population of Puerto Ricans in into Brooklyn or whatever. All of a sudden, there was zillions of them, yeah. and the way you could tell that there were Puerto Ricans because they had the ash on their head. Yeah. Okay, and they never shaved the, their uh, hair on their legs at that time. It, it became cool to be Puerto Rican <laughs> once they got Rosario Dawson. As a spokesperson. Now, now yeah. Lent, Lent remains until Easter, right? Yeah, and it's 40 days. It's yeah. 40 fucking days you got to give up something? Well, well if, if you're a good Catholic, yes, I'm not. But wait a minute, there's no such thing as being a bad Catholic, because if you're a bad Catholic, they, uh, what do you call it, they uh, excommunicate, excommunicate you. Well, if you're a bad Catholic, then you've got a naughty dominatrix nun. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Well, anyway. Tough world. So what? What? So, but let's say you're going to be a good Catholic. Let's let's pretend for a moment. Okay. Uh, uh, 
because we know there's no God. Otherwise, why would you be in the situation you're in? Uh, why is it? Can I ask you this question? I want to know, uh, as somebody who is a, uh, I think I used to refer to you on the uh, serious show as a gimpoid American. Uh, <laughs> Why it is that some of these people who have just this tragic, horrible thing, you know, which yours, I don't want to even put in that category because you've handled it so well that you've, you've, you've made it your life rather than, you know, than just giving into it. You just go on living life. But uh, people who have like just horrible stories to tell and they go, but as long as I believe in Jesus, my Lord and Savior, blah, 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 I would say, fuck you, God. Why, why'd you do this to me? You know, I was a good human being. I was a decent human being. Why the fuck did you do this to me? Wah. Yeah, <laughs> wah. Uh, I mean, like for me, I, I've i never lost my faith. I, it just, you either have your faith or you don't. And it, and it, it, you know, I, I explained it to somebody once that faith is a lot like love. It, it either is or it isn't, and you know you have it or you don't. It's not something that you can force on somebody else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people, they do lose their faith over some tragic mm -hmm. thing that happens. Others, like me, never lost it. Others, they go deeper into it. Um, it, it, it's an individual thing and it, it, the way that you, I think the way that, that you're either raised or the way that you kind of, um, fix things in your head. Yeah. But did you ever go through a period where you went in after this thing happened into a period of deep depression? No, no, actually, um, I had, it was five, I, I may have brought this up before, but there's a book called Tuesdays with Maury. Yeah. And um, it's it, about a, uh, a gentleman. He's a uh, professor at um, what is it, Brandeis University. Mm -hmm. And he got um, Lou Gehrig's disease. Right. And one of, and one of his students uh, saw him on, on TV with Ted Koppel. And Ted Koppel was doing a story about diet. And this guy was dying. So he got um, in touch with a teacher again, and he would fly out from Detroit to the East Coast every Tuesday, and they would do like a class. One would be on love, anger, things like that. And mm -hmm. the guy wrote a book then about this. Well, I read it before I got paralyzed, not knowing I was going to become paralyzed. And what he said in the book was, as he was losing the ability to do everything, mm -hmm. he would allow himself about five minutes every morning to cry and to feel sorry for himself, and then he'd just get on with the day. So what happened with me is, I, I mean, that book came right back to me, and the first week that I was in the hospital, I cried myself to sleep and just kind of wondered why me, what the fuck happened, and then I said, finally, you know what? Fuck it. You're either going to learn how to live with it, or you're not. And it was at that point where I just stopped. No, I, I never went into depression. I was told I needed to be depressed by a psychologist, but I wasn't. I just I, I had my my sight set on getting back to work and getting back to life, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I um, uh, it was an old joke about a, about a, a old Jew who suddenly becomes paralyzed or whatever, and uh, he s looks up at the skies and says, Dear God, why me? And then there was a bolt of lightning and a voice that came from the heavens and said, Because for some reason you piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever get that feeling? Maybe you just <laughs> pissed him off. You know, He just didn't like you. You were just, he was a Republican. He didn't like you. You know, and that's that's why. Can't say that about Patrick or me. What? 
Oh, yeah. He, well, the Republican, he didn't like us? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you realize we have the two Republicans on the top and the two liberals on the bottom? Oh, mine's showing up differently. I, oh, I got oh, you yeah. across the bottom. Oh, you got me across the bottom. We all show up differently on Skype. But anyway, on the screen, as people are looking, there's Patrick oh, and there's uh, Phil and there's uh, Rob and there's uh, Jeff. And we'd love to have more people here, but I, I love this batch, you know. Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's talk for a moment about, is there anything in the news that bothers any of you people at all? Ah, there goes Patrick. What the fuck is up with those portraits? <laughs> <laughs> it's it up with those portraits, and I heard, you know, uh, the uh, former president of three different kind of fucking flowers, one from Kenya, one from Hawaii, and one from Chicago. Mm. It looks like he's stuck in an ugly-ass painting. It's a nice portrait of him in an ugly painting. And Michelle Obama's, the whole thing is for shit. Well, you know what I mean? I said, that, like I said that to my wife. I said, it really, Michelle Obama's picture is really crappy. Okay? There's stuff about the artist. That, well, that artist did some other art that was questionable. Well, all I know is some, that some the, head uh, hang uh, chopped off heads, or well, I don't know about that. Was that the guy? Because yeah, the, the woman artist. who did the picture of Michelle, Michelle, uh, the problem with it is, it's She's really it, ugly. It, it, it no, made her it look looks it looks like it was done by a three year old. <laughs> you know, it it just wasn't artful enough, and. And a girlfriend thinks it was lovely. And I went, what about that is lovely? Now, I kind of understand the Obama one. You know, I think you may not like it because it's kind of screwy. But it, there's something about it. He's going to hang in the White House? No, no, the, um, uh, the National Gallery. Oh, okay, because yeah. I figured they were doing it to upset Trump. Uh, you know, put in a piece of art that he wouldn't like. No, no, no. Years. There's, I think there's already an official portrait of Obama on the walls in the White House. I think they did it during his last year that he was there, and I remember the seem to remember them unveiling it. Oh, was the yeah. wall wall hole looking one that said "Hope and Change" underneath? No, no that that was a war hole. It was this guy. He, listen, oh, he looking. he wall he, he helped he helped win him the campaign with that piece of art. I got to tell yeah. you, that was well, he stole it from Andy Warhol. No, he didn't. Yeah, it looked just like a warhole. No, it doesn't look like a warhole. Nothing like a warhole. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you look like an asshole, pictures. and I'm not, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, the one with the four pictures looked look like a rip from Andy Warhol. No, it didn't. Yeah. No. No, it didn't. No. <laughs> I'm saying, no, it didn't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Michelle Obama's painting, everything looked, it, it just flat. It's almost as if yeah. it, it it's like, two-dimensional, wasn't it? What that? Two-dimensional it was, is the best way it was to describe it. two-dimensional. It's right. not three-dimensional. Yeah, it, it's like a really good age <coughs> in art class did it. <coughs> understand form and understand how the eyes fit and, you know, but it, it's ugly as sin. Do you, do you, and it, she it, is a very beautiful lady. And... It just, it's its like a child's painting of her, is yeah. what it is. Uh, his is, is a little more studied and a little more photorealistic, oh, you know. Yes. But, but yes. I yes. looked at it and he didn't get the face exactly. You know, there's something, I mean, yes, for the most part it looks, you'd say, oh, well, that's Barack Obama. But there's something about the face that isn't exactly Barack Obama. Which reminded me, I, do you know what I think is the worst piece of, of art in Washington, D.C.? Piss Christ. <laughs> you always bring up Piss Christ. One guy does something called Piss Christ, and you never forget it. I brought it up for Lent. Anyway, <laughs> and I know people are going to yell at me about this. The Martin Luther King Memorial looks nothing like Martin Luther King. And on top of it, it was done by a Chinese uh, uh, statue maker. What do they call him? Uh, uh, chiseler, oh. <laughs> you know. Chiseler. <laughs> uh, who, who chiseled this out of stone and made 
managed to make and nobody ever mentions this because you're not supposed to yeah, say things about about a monument to Martin Luther King. He made him look Chinese. Am I right was, or wrong? Was the Chiseler a Batman character? N no, no, but it could have been. Very good. Yeah. Um, the, yes, Patrick. I remember when that was unveiled that there was controversy about exactly what you said, that he has a Chinese or Asian look about him. And there were, um, I don't know if it was King family members that, um, there was some division um, in in the um, in the family of who liked it and who didn't, but it got approved, and yeah, it, it it's not very nice. We could get sued it, for that, by the way, doing that. Okay, there's there's your Coke bottle, uh, Andy Warhol. I don't I don't I don't, the, I don't, re I don't remember I don't remember that as being an Andy Warhol. I think that's a knockoff. It is. It, it's. Uh, Does it say uh, Andy yeah, Warhol? Old, old bottles by Andy Warhol. That's an Andy Warhol style uh, painting. Yeah. Now you're not telling me that the hope and change. No. At, no. Uh, no. Actually, what it looks like. What it look. looks like is someone <clears throat> who took a who photoshopped it and solarized mm -hmm. it into two different colors. Okay. Here's mm -hmm. here's one uh, with of oh, Andy Warhol. Uh, look, you're not going to prove it to me. I know. I know Warhol's work. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, and you no, don't think the no, hope and change no, had no, that? No. No. Not look? at all. Didn't have no. that effect at all. Do you? What do you think, uh, Patrick? You you disagree. Jeff disagrees. I, You're trying to prove your point. I, You're not making it. Hey, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm saying it, it has it has a striking similarity. A striking similarity. Okay. Yes. Fucking. Oh, you, you I, advertising yeah. Bill Free this week, uh, Thursday and Friday. I'm shooting two shows. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we did fine the other day without you, so you know. I, I I understand. I want you to do fine again. Well, you know, who knows? I mean, if I only wind up having two people or something, I'll sign off early and go to sleep. What the hell? Fuck That's it. the threat. You never do. Huh? That's always the threat. You know what? I I'll tell you what my big mistake was. I sandwiched myself between two shows. So if I if I if I made myself the last show of the night, I could say, "Yeah, I'm getting a little tired. Let's cut this off, okay?" You know, nice. Run a rerun. See you later. What? Just push the button. Run a rerun. Because you're not here. No, I have to prove the show can be great you without have you. Low turnout, and uh, and you don't and where you don't feel good, just push the button. Well, anyway, I'm not going to have a low turnout. Fridays are always good. Mm -hmm. We had we had almost a full house the other night when you were yeah. here. And, uh, yep. you know, we, we, we manage, we manage. I know you're not, you've lost interest in the show and you're no, taking no, no, nights uh, off A now. friend of mine used to be with this band called Crown of Thorns, uh, which uh, used to open for the, uh, not Kinks, the uh, Kiss. It was, it's a metal band. Well, he's got a new band and I'm shooting it up in Nevada, Nevada. Because uh, he needs some photos. And then uh, the UC Theater is having me shoot a band called Lotus. Mm -hmm. uh, which has been around for a long time. But, By the uh, way, anybody see this thing that CNN is running? They're doing this uh, this mini series on the kidnapping and the renegade life of uh, Patty Hearst. Yeah. Did you watch it? No, not yet. It's it, it's not bad. It's not bad. You know? I lived through it. You know, uh, I was in San Francisco at, uh, at the time of the Patty Hearst kidnapping. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it was uh, front and center. Well, uh, her, the Hearst family won't talk to, wouldn't talk to them. But they did get the guy that kidnapped her. Um, and, and his name is, I'm trying to remember his name now. He had his wife, Emily. He, he and his he, wife, Emily, were the, the two of the kidnappers. Oh, okay. Uh, from, uh, Harris. Uh, yes. Emily Harris and uh, I can't remember his name. He's on it. And so is Stephen Weed, her boyfriend. Remember the one she was engaged to? Yeah, the one who said, take her? No, no, no. <laughs> they it, were living together. According to this story, they beat, they beat the shit out of him. Really? They were butty hitting with a butt of rifles and crap like that. You know. Uh, and the guy said, if, it, 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 I think it was Sam and Emily Harris. I think that's who yeah, it was. Sam Harris? I don't think it was Sam, no. 
No, or then it's another name, Harris. It's Emily Harris. Uh, let's see here. Anybody uh, coming up with anything here? Uh, Forbin, you just make nothing but remarks on the page. That's fine with me, you know. Um, uh, but no, I watched it. It's not bad. I watched the fir first episode. I'm going to watch the second episode tonight. And then it goes on, I think, for like about four or five weeks. It's six weeks. Six yeah, weeks? Six episodes, yeah. yeah. And then there's another show that's only six episodes, Waco, mm. which is about what happened in Waco. And it's very good. It's the excellent. Ovidians. The only thing I can't get used to is uh, David Koresh's wife, his first and main wife, okay, is played by Supergirl. Yes. <laughs> Did you watch it? Oh, yeah. I, I, I've been watching it, and I watched the... It was on uh, A and E or, or something like that, where the two night special. Yeah. Yeah, and it was already um, there were like four hundred uh, audio recordings that have never been released to the public. That was that the FBI uh, agents going oh shit? I and the <laughs> and the um, negotiators. So it was it was a very good documentary. It was four hours. It was over two nights. Yeah. And. I started this Waco thing, yeah. and I just like you, Alex. I'm watching it, and I'm going, "Who the hell is that? Wait, that's Supergirl." Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. But other than that, it, it's a it, it's good uh, good series. Oh, the, yeah, I it, what I like about it. Oh, by the way, Forbin writes, "Alex, you're supposed to engage your live audience. Damn you! You broke the YouTube." Anyway. Uh, 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 what I uh, find interesting about it is they almost what what happens every now and then I I hear my voice coming back just one word at a time or something huh I, I have a question wait a is minute your me, audience alive what I, I you know I, I thought that your audience dies off as the show gets no uh, actually goes on what I find now with audience. YouTube as we get towards the end of the show the number gets bigger and bigger. Really? Yeah. I'm serious. Anyway, let me... Uh, Mine's this long. Can I finish the <laughs> story, what I was going to say? Uh, the, the thing is that um, uh, what I like about the series is they kind of portray Koresh in a somewhat more benevolent picture. I mean, in other words, he looks like he was the victim of a clusterfuck. Sort of, he was. Yeah. You know, uh, they didn't like what he was doing, and I, I think he was the victim of a clusterfuck. Yeah, I mean, they had Ruby Ridge, which was one major clusterfuck. And then they come down, they do this thing, where all he does is go out the front door to try and make peace, and they start shooting at him. You know, and I'm sure they're not lying about any of this stuff, but it paints a little more of a realistic picture of what went on. And you kind of have, even though Koresh, ha he's not a bad guy. He's just didn't deluded, have, you know. Didn't they have agents on the roof and uh, they were peering into like a bathroom window and they shot him? Yes, because they had just shot them and killed about 10 of them inside the building, including babies. You know, so what are you going to do? You're going to just sit there and let somebody come through your window because you know they got rifles and they're going to start shooting some more? That's why I'm calling it a clusterfuck. You don't think they were paranoid? Oh, I would be, wouldn't you, after something like that? You go out with your hands up, you say, all we want is peace, and all of a sudden they start shooting and they're killing people inside the building and there are women and children in that building? You know, yeah. uh, I, yes, Patrick. None of the kids were shot. All of the children right. that died, they burned to death. Really? Uh, okay. And and the thing is, the reason that I really enjoy this series, and I agree with you, where it shows him as more benevolent down to earth, is the documentary that I watched was a very mm. two-sided documentary, where it, because of the recording that you heard him talking to the um, negotiators and to whomever the FBI people were, um, it really gave a good, it was a lot like the, you know, the movie Torah, Torah, Torah. Yeah. Where you gave the Japanese side and, and the American side. What a documentary did the same thing. 
and it interviewed nine survivors of the Waco incident yeah. who are still Branch Davidians. And they still attend, a couple of them attend the new church there. Others have moved away for obvious reasons. Um, and in this series, I was curious to see how it was. And it's doing the same thing. It's showing a good um, a good mix, and, a, and it, it shows both sides. And it shows, what's his name, um, Del Toro telling everybody, you know, they know, just don't do it. It's not going to be a surprise. And um, that was the same thing in the documentary. So, um, and... Yeah, it, it was Janet Reno's uh, not her finest hour when they no. finally get to go ahead. So all of it, in in the documentary, there was this so one far, of so, guys yes, that, but so far, it, yeah. so far we haven't seen Janet Reno in this series. Well, not yet. Um, it, at the end of the documentary that I watched, there was an ATF agent or FBI agent. I'm not sure, sure. what he. Um, he walked by a, a concrete building, or what was left of it, and he said, and this is where there were like 22 children basically mounted together. Wow. Yeah, and that, that's where the children died, and those children were not allowed to leave because those were David Koresh's direct descendants who were going to be the... Um, uh, what did he call them? They, they were going to be the, the they were going to be like the next kings of heaven or, or whatever it is. All of the other children and people that were released were not his kids, um, but the adult that stayed there wanted to, and the children that stayed there had no choice because they were his blood children, and they all died in the fire. The uh, reason that building went up like that was because it was handmade by him and by his followers and it was badly made and um one of the one of the followers that was interviewed in the documentary remembered someone yelling inside the building um no 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 you're supposed to pour it outside and they were referring to gasoline so they had basically set themselves up to burn to death and, and what was supposed to happen from what the survivor said is they were supposed to set up some sort of a fire line outside mm -hmm. to try to keep the agents out and somebody mistook the direction from Koresh oh wow put the uh, gasoline all inside so not only you're correct with it was shittily built but then you add uh, some sort of accelerant to it inside. I thought it was smoke bombs and... and uh, uh, well, no, the, the, the smoke bombs had something to do with igniting it, but because right. all that fuel was inside, yeah. uh, the thing just went up in flames. I mean, that thing, I remember when it went up, it was burnt to the ground within 20 minutes or something, you know. It was, you know, but it was a, it is a gigantic clusterfuck. And I just find, I, I, I love the fact that they're not playing Koresh as a bad guy. They're playing him as a deluded human being who really, who really doesn't believe this kind of thing can be going on. I think now, that's. It was Clinton's uh, uh, AG that, that ordered the. Janet win, Reno. Right? Yeah. Janet Reno. Yeah. 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 Not one of her proudest moments. I'm wondering now, in this series, they haven't done it yet, if they're going to show the guy who did the Oklahoma bombing. Because he he was he was in the area watching this all go on. They, they showed him in the documentary because they had still photos in the documentary. What was, it, what was his name? I forget his name now. Um, uh, the guy that blew up the uh, building with the yeah. the, newer, yeah. the truck? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, what they showed, they showed a photo of the crowd, and they showed him there. So um, that'll be interesting if, if he is in the series as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, as a side note, I would do that in the drama. You know. Oh yeah, it's accurate. 
because they started getting like a whole audience there watching this go on day in and day out. And oh, yeah. it, you know, and they you know Michael Shannon plays the uh, the, FB, the FBI agent who tries to uh, uh, you know uh, br you know bring them out and so on. And it's 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 really I think it's a very good series. I think you have looked it up. It. it was Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Otherwise, that would have been burning in my brain all night until I, you know, three o'clock in the morning, be lying in bed and going, "Oh, Timothy McVeigh." Yeah, uh, one of those kind of things. Uh, so, um, what did you think about our president and his tweet about the Me Too movement? I think that he was right on uh, with that because he's saying what's what's happened to due process. It's what you've been saying all along. Oh no, I can't. I can't disagree with the tweet, Rob. I'm going to tell you that I don't think he he meant it for the same reasons I, because yeah. he doesn't give a uh, damn about the women in the movement. So yes, part of it. Be, you know, think about his background. Think just think you know, about his I, to begin with. I He's agree. With, I agree with you. I agree with you totally, Rob. It's like I said earlier. It's the classic example of a broken clock being right twice a day. Mm -hmm. That this particular tweet, in and of itself, taken with with no none of the stuff that surrounded it, be it Trump, be it Rob Porter, be it any of those people, because it was self-serving. All right. But taken by and of itself, I can't disagree with it because it's a position I've taken. Uh, but we know why he wrote it. So it had an ulterior motive. And I think that's what we question right. in all of this. Well, and secondly, anybody, I don't think he wrote it because I've never seen one of his tweets be that well written. Well, he's, it's his, it's one of his own causes, right? I mean, let's no, face it. No, but I mean, he, he, he said some women, uh, some women are right, some women are wrong, some men are right, some men are wrong. I mean, the, the way it is, it's created. It looks like a speechwriter wrote it. It's Did anybody catch the, uh, the the session today with the FBI? How they how they ripped apart what the White House has been saying about the whole Porter uh, chain of events. They they told the FBI, everybody's wondering how it is that this guy Porter has been with a he doesn't have a, a, a security clearance. Right. He has a right. temporary clearance. And the F and and the White House is saying that they just learned about all this when the pictures came out, you know, within the last week or so. Well, no. they were told the FBI told them, the FBI informed them. They interviewed the uh, the director of the FBI this morning, the Senate did, I believe it was the Senate. It might have been Congress. One of the two bodies interviewed the, them this morning, and he said, oh, the FBI told the White House not once, not twice, but three times, and as early as last March that this was happening. Yeah. So now the White House is scrambling because no. their timeline's all fucked up. Until there was proof, when they presented that picture, that was the end of Porter. When they presented Please. the picture, the black eye of the uh, ex-wife, uh, that was in, the end of Porter. In the meantime, oh, you got a guy. Innocent. And, ah. oh, and that's what Trump said. The guy said he was innocent. What happened to due process? In the meantime, you've got a guy in the Oval Office handing Trump all kinds of high, he could He's compromised. He could be blackmailed. He has been right there with Trump this entire time, handing him the things that he doesn't read that he should be reading. But he did a good job doing it. All I'm saying is, you've got, what did they say, seven people still in the White House who don't have clearances? Why don't they have clearances? Because the FBI isn't clearing these people. Yet nobody tells the president, or maybe there's no law that says, you know what, if you can't get cleared in yeah. three months, you're gone. It should be that way. Uh, it should be that way. Yeah, yes, Patrick. I think I mentioned it last week. Um, Kimberly Guilfoyle offered a five was a uh, prosecutor and a, an attorney. She explained part of this whole thing with Porter. And I think it also goes to the other seven that are not cleared. Is if there's something that they're contesting in their background, yeah. the FBI has to go back and re 
examine their background, therefore that's why it's taken this long. Right. And I agree, there should be something like, um, just like at a job where you have a 90-day probationary period, mm -hmm. it should be something like 90 days. If you're not cleared within that period. Well, uh, let, me, let, me, let me say, I, I was with the Armed Forces mm -hmm. Radio and Television Service when I was in the Navy, as you know. And uh, I, when I first went there, they put me in for top secret clearance because uh, there was a there was a code room in this building. So anybody who worked in the building had to have top secret clearance. And uh, I stayed. I was there for a year and a half. And on my day being mustered out, they told me that the clearance had just come through. Right. Okay, so I know it does, you know, mm. sometimes they are not. And, and by the way, the, in spite of, I, I got my top secret clearance in spite of the fact that my cousin was a communist. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, so, I mean, it was laughable to me. But, I mean, well, I, they never kicked me out. Yeah. You so, know, so I work in the D.C. area in IT, right? Yeah. And I have been to, <clears throat> I, I know plenty of people who are, Top secret cleared, secret, super top secret. They're all levels. There, there's second, next level over top secret was the one that people who worked inside the room had, which is crypto like, top you, secret. But you, here you go. For these particular jobs, where just because you're in a top secret area doesn't mean, in other words, if they let you in and they give you a temporary, you are completely shielded from any top secret information until you get that clearance. You could work in the building. But yet, but yet the White House will allow the most sensitive data inside the Oval Office. They'll allow non people Now, this guy never got a clearance porter, and yet he had all kinds of access. To well, I could say that it was in such a way that any it is in such a way that any idiot could read that material. Yeah. And the only problem was the only idiot that should have been reading it can't read. Can't read, right? Well, I I work and uh, I have access and I have clearances that get me into federal buildings and so forth to put in the floor covering, and you know they they had to clear not only me but all of my guys. Uh, so I, I find and, that funny on for some reason that laying carpet you have to have clearance. You're in sensitive areas. Uh, right, I get that. I got and, your sensitive area right here. Uh, so yeah, you're in New York too long. Uh, so, uh, so, but the uh, I have a buddy uh, yeah. that uh, got a Q clearance because he was doing translation in Afghanistan, and they actually called me because they he worked for me. And this is the Q clearance goes back to your third grade teacher. Now, even though he was an Afghani, uh, they they got him that. The guy who taught me how to shoot also had a Q clearance because he was in charge of taking over security on nuclear submarines when they come into the Bay Area. I mean, so nuclear. His, his, his Marine team uh, would go in and, uh, and, and take over security as they, as they entered. And uh, that one, he told me that they, at the time they spent $50,000 to do this, and they, and they did talk to his third grade teacher. Uh, and, uh, but he, he got it pretty quickly. I, I think if they want to clear you, you can get it, and you can get it quickly. Uh, but that's the thing, right? You've got this guy who can't get cleared, and yet he's allowed to... I mean, what were they waiting for? Why didn't they want to get rid of this guy? Trump is saying that there are people in the FBI that are sabotaging the system. Uh, that And <laughs> hey, that's what he's saying. And maybe it's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let, let, me, let me say this, then, with... With the, with the whole thing, it is like General Kelly. Shouldn't he step in then and say, look, these idiots are not cleared. They're not allowed in the Oval Office. They're not allowed in the West Wing. They can sit out in the fucking lobby. Absolutely. Until they are cleared. They Absolutely. don't have to be removed from their position, but they're not allowed to see anything that has this type of class. But you, but you forget you forget that he has become Trump's bitch. Yep. They thought that Flynn was going to be his his Jiminy Cricket, but he turned out to be his bitch. I thought it was. Uh, oh oh, you're talking about uh, the general, or you're talking about? I'm talking about general. His chief general staff. Kelly. Excuse me. Why did I say Flynn? General Kelly. Uh, he's 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 he was he brought in to be Jiminy Cricket, and he wound up being 
Trump's bitch? I don't know. I think he's been keeping him more on the straight and narrow than anyone else has. I mean, yeah, it just, must be that he likes rules. he likes Trump because Trump grabbed him by his pussy. <laughs> they just ignore all the rules. That's all. Whatever you know, clearances. His, his son-in-law doesn't have a clearance yet. Hasn't gotten it yet. Why? Here, what is going well, on here, in his here, background here, that he doesn't have this clearance? Here, and why isn't anybody screaming that he shouldn't be allowed? To be involved in anything well, until he gets clear. Well, you know, it, the job. You know, about, now, it, uh, by the, the way, you, Jeff has something to say. Yeah, my experience with the security business is when I got a, a, a job in a sophisticated area, I, I was a, allowed to start right away to work and I was in the building and nobody really gave me any restrictions on anything. However, it took about a year and a half. That's about it took with me. To get approved. And because like what? yourself, after that, I left. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I was mustered out of, out, out of the Navy maybe a week later. After they, they called me and they said, congratulations, you've just been approved for top secret clearance. Oh, really? Uh, I'm leaving next uh, I week. I went into a different building and it was totally... Uh, uh, non uh, secret, and uh, I was approved. Meanwhile, I've walked out with every secret I could find in this building in the last year and a half. Do you remember what's what clearance level you were going for that took so long? I think it was just top secret, <clears throat> top secret clearance. Uh, because and it was only because in the building it had nothing to do with the fact that I was doing broadcasting for Armed Forces Radio, but in the middle of the building was this concrete bunker, literally in the middle of the main floor, and inside was a code room. And that's the reason why we had to have the top secret clearance. What about you, Jeff? Do you know what kind of clearance you're going for? I'm not quite sure what it was called. I will tell you one thing. I was, I was working on this uh, uh, airplane that had uh, atomic bombs on it. How's that? Well, that would have been Q. That Q. would be enough, you know? But, yeah, that oh, Q well, you certainly can keep a secret. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I had the lowest form of clearance, and it took about six months to do, and I was allowed to work. What's the lowest form? Trump clearance? Public trust. Oh, public trust. Oh. <laughs> God. I, well, what we got was these access uh, clearances that allowed us to come and go. Mm -hmm. But it was easy. You know, you, they took an electronic thumbprint. Uh, you filled out some stuff. Uh, some investigator uh, called you back in a week, and... Uh, you had your pass. I always worried about stuff. So I, the minute they started going for my clearance, I worried that they would find out about my communist cousin and uh, first cousin. And uh, I worried about that for about a couple of months. And then I saw that nothing was happening. So I just forgot about it totally. And then all of a sudden, about a week before I was being mustered out, they came to me and they said, oh, by the way, we just got the information. You've been cleared. I go, oh, good. <laughs> you know, I mean, your communist cousin got cleared six months before. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> well, I got interviewed by the FBI for my clearance. The guy came in and told, he, when he asked me about my wife, he asked me about, you know, my wife's from the Philippines. He said, if you ever think, he goes, if you ever need a top secret clearance, it's going to take forever because they, they need to travel to the Philippines and talk to your, all your relatives and it's, he said, you'll have a lot of trouble getting a top secret clearance. Well, I, I, this was in L.A. I lived in San Francisco. That was about it. You know, I mean, uh, they, could, they could fly up there for a day and find out everything about me. Uh, what were you, 18, uh, the only The only thing old, was, when? I mean, uh, why I was worried is I was kind of, I was like, uh, I won't say I was, but I was the closest thing to a red diaper baby you can imagine. You know, my parents were real lefties, and my, as I say, my cousin and her husband were members of the Communist Party, okay? So, uh, you know, I, I kind of worried about it. I had the concern because I didn't want them to put me back on a fucking boat. You know, that, that, that was, that, that was the, uh, a horrible experience. We went out once, and I threw up for the whole trip. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there in the mess hall. As the boat is, star is starting to take off, right? And, we're, and it's on the water and it's moving. And I'm having soup. And in the bowl, it's kind of going, let me, uh, let me uh, put on my full, it's, it's going like this in the bowl. And all of a sudden, I notice it going like this in the bowl. And all of a sudden, 
I start getting queasy. <laughs> and what were you on? A rowboat? I, I was no, I was on a cruiser. Uh, which you know, I thought, which I thought, see, yes. uh, they, they asked me what kind of boat I wanted to be on a ship, excuse me, not boat. Mm. And I said, put me on a, a on a, a, what, what do you have? And they said, Oh, well, we've got, uh, we've got an aircraft carrier. I said too big. Uh, and they said, <laughs> we've got destroyer. Got we got a destroyer. And I went, nah, they, they go around destroying stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then they said, "Well, we do have the USS Topeka, which is a cruiser." And I said, "Oh, a cruiser! That kind of just kind of zips around the water. It's a little boat, and it, right? The the cruiser. It sounds like something you buy from Chris Craft, you know, a cruiser, right?" <laughs> yeah. And so I get myself, uh, I, yeah, I get myself this cruiser, uh, and and I I walk down the pier, and I don't know one boat from another, and yeah. I'm looking over at these small boats and saying, "Which one of these is the Topeka?" And I said to somebody, which one of these is the Topeka? And they said, oh, that's not where the Topeka is. And they point over to this ship that's this massive fucking ship. I said, oh, I thought these little small things were cruisers. And they said, no, that's a destroyer. So yeah. that was my, uh, you know, and all, all cruise ships are named after cities. Okay. I think capital cities, actually. You have a Jane's? No, I don't have a Jane's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I do have a penis. No, uh, I uh, no, I. What happened was, let's see here. Cruisers are named after cities, and I think they're usually capital cities because Topeka is the capital of of, of Kansas. Um, aircraft carriers are named after war Person? heroes, basically. USS Forrestal, you know, things like that. I think no. Wait a minute. The uh, I think there's an aircraft carrier, the Enterprise. That's I, the big I can't, one. It's I, in I San Francisco. Remember. But destroyers are all named after people. You know, just people who were friends of the president. Mm -hmm. Huh? What were you saying? Uh, I'll get you in a uh, second, oh, there was an aircraft carrier that was in San Francisco for uh, not here for a long time in the seventies and eighties and. But uh, you know, I what's the ships that they name after presidents, presidents like, like Harold Ford and. And, you know all of those. I thought those were uh, those aren't aircraft carriers. Yeah, you you might be right. I don't know. I'm trying to remember now. I used to know all that shit. The uh, the next um, the next destroyer is going to be called the SS Stormy. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> SS Stormy. Yes, Patrick. Well, some news pl flash about the the hundred and thirty thousand dollar payment. Uh, now saying I think they said it was. Trump's money? I don't know. It just yeah, it was Trump's on. lawyers. Trump's lawyer paid it personal at a personal. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I see. Okay. okay, Patrick. I just wanted to let Phil know that um, you know, even an aircraft carrier get bounced around the water like a little bobber, depending on what type of storm it's in. So, oh, doesn't yeah. matter how big the ship is. Get, I was on a guided a missile frigate. Well, this and, uh, well, my, my, my the Topeka was a guided missile uh, cruiser. Okay. It had been, been retrofitted to be a guided missile cruiser, however. And when they took it out for the first time, since it had guided missiles on it, and they shot the missiles out, they turned around and started heading for the ship. Because <laughs> they were heat-seeking, and I think at the last minute they were able to deflect them or something. Well, I, back a, a long time ago, uh, a friend of mine... Uh, uh, got me into the Navy League, and it was the Beverly Hills Council of the Navy League. Well, it didn't take much. You just had to fill out an application. And so I went on a three-day thing out of Long Beach uh, where, uh, for five bucks a day, and that was back then. Uh, they gave you a cabin. You ate with the captain, and uh, you, you just... Went out and, and relaxed. It was, it was a great It's called time. a Viking cruise, okay? <laughs> a Viking cruise? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, uh, you know, they still do that. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was an enjoyable time. I don't know uh, if you've ever been, been on an aircraft carrier. Those things are huge. They're like a city inside. Yeah, that's what I've heard. You know. Yes, Patrick? I was just going to say, uh, aircraft carrier... Very named the USS Enterprise uh, was one of them. And the one that I saw in Pearl Harbor come in was the USS John Dennis. And I was just going to say, like a city, because we had to wait 
about three hours before we could go out to the Pearl Harbor um, Memorial while this thing was coming in. So we had to wait for all the choppers to come in and all this shit. And the thing finally came into port. And then we took our little craft that we were in to go out, out to, to yes. Memorial. Yeah. And you go right next to the carrier. Now, you're still maybe 200, 300 yards away from it, but looking up, that fucking thing looked like the Empire State Building, and you figure that's just what above the water. I can imagine, I mean, just you figure half of that is below the water as well. And then the other thing that I did is I went on the USS Missouri for mm -hmm. a tour. Mm -hmm. There's no way in hell I could be in the Navy because when I got on the, on that battleship, I mean, from the from a distance, it looked big. But walking bow to stern, and it only took a couple of minutes, there's no fucking way I could live in that. And you then through the door. So we, we did a tour inside. No, was, this a, was this, a, you say, a battleship? Yeah, the USS Missouri. They don't make them anymore. They stopped making battleships. Yeah. Uh, in Missouri. fact, I, I don't know if there are many of them left at all. No, if you remember, the Missouri was taken on a mothball along with the Wisconsin during the Gulf War in 91. And then after the war, the Missouri went back to Pearl Harbor and were uh, put there as a memorial. And uh, it, it, I mean, it's quite an interesting deal to go through. Yeah. But I, there's no way I could. By the way, have you ever seen a ship in mothballs? Yes, because yeah. you, you because the, near the Bay Area, up near Vallejo, there was a whole, also, literally a whole no, base of mothball ships when I was a kid. On the Hudson River, there was a mothball fleet as well, right over by West Point. Yeah, what do they do? What do they there. do with them? Finally, sink them, or what do they no, do they with them? Cut them up. Cut them up, literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah they cut them up and uh, uh, for the steel. Yeah, son of a bitch. Um, uh, I was looking. The number of fleet aircraft carriers still in operation by nation, mm -hmm. and so uh, of all the countries that uh, that they list, there's 21 aircraft carriers currently in use. Eleven of them are in the United States, mm -hmm. and only and the other country that has the most is China. They have two. <laughs> we have we have how many? Eleven. Eleven. They're going to beat us without any of that stuff. Yeah, because today in, in Congress, before a congressional committee, I can't remember who said it, but one of these people testifying said that his greatest fear is is that we owe so much money to China, all they have to do is make the bill come due. They uh, We owe them something like most of our national debt. It's been, a good thing we have a president that doesn't pay his bills. <laughs> <laughs> But all China has to say is, we want the money. And we're, we're gone. France did that to us with uh, the gold standard. You remember, uh, you know, they said, uh, hey, we don't, want the, we don't want these cash notes. We want the gold. And we had to and did deliver gold to, to France. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the other big news is uh, the tales being told on a reality show by Amarosa. <laughs> you know why they fired her? She was misusing uh, uh, automobiles that uh, in the White House that she wasn't supposed to use, and that's and that's why she was fired. Really, I never heard that. I, well, I, I read it. Uh, I read it this morning, and then where did you read it? Uh, it was like one of those New York Times articles. Uh, it was a legitimate article. Uh, you know, the uh, the other thing about Amorosa was she was taking advantage of uh, of things. Like when she had her wedding, she she brought the wedding party through the White House. And she I wasn't supposed to do that. Yeah. Uh, so she, she'd done a number of things. But this one was over uh, a, a car fleet or misuse of automobiles. Uh, can you find it? Uh, okay, here we go. Amorosa used strictly forbidden White House car service for her commute. <laughs> Right. So and, that's, and they said that's why they fired. fired. Oh man! Oh man! That's terrific. That's really so, wonderful. Uh, I, I think uh, you know she was a little bit of a loose cannon. Yeah, but well, but but on the other hand, 
she got hired by Trump. Yeah. You know, it, a loose How do you cannon. Put it there? I mean, he had I mean, her on The Apprentice three times. She, she should have known she was a loose cannon. No, but he, she was a trusted employee. And, uh, and you know, who knew that when she got into a position uh, that she could misuse her power or th think that she had power and, no, here, and she obviously misused it. Here's what happened with all of them. It happened with Trump, too. It's happening with Trump right now. He has this misguided idea that being president, you can do anything you want to do. You know, that you just wave your hand and make it so. Well, I'm sorry. There's no way it goes. You know, it's just not the way it goes. And Amorosa probably was just going along with that notion. Hey, here, I got a bunch of cars uh, strictly forbidden to use them, but I could use them to take my commute to work. Now, do you think she was using Trump's uh, presidential limousine to go back and forth to work? I mean, what cars could they possibly have that she couldn't use? I don't know what they would be, but I would, if she couldn't use them, she did, you right. know, and that's the point. You know, all of these people have just the wrong idea about what, you know, being president doesn't give you power. It tells you what the powers are that you have and what you can what you do, not that you can make up, you know, and I mean... Everything that he's done recently, everything he's done over his time as president has been one case of obstruction of justice after another. We'll see. I mean, trying to fire, uh, you know, firing Comey was obstruction of justice. The fact that he asked people for their loyalty was, I'm, I'm doing this because I feel like I'm going to sneeze, was an obstruction of justice. I mean, there's a lot of obstruction of justice that went on. I, I think that if Com if uh, what's his name ever ever gets far enough in this probe and is allowed to continue, uh, Trump's in for a big world of they're, hurt. They're saying that Hillary and and Comey that there was there was some uh, some issues going on with them that uh, and and some of these things were ordered by Obama uh, as far as well, who uh, said some of the that? spying. Who said mm -hmm. that? Who said that? Uh, you're going to ask me that, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can remember that as easily as you can remember. You know, I, I don't remember. It, it, well, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what Hillary did or didn't do. It doesn't matter what Obama did or didn't do. It matters what Trump is doing because he's president now. Okay. Uh, well, he's going president. after those guys. And, and wait a minute. And and, and wait a minute. And even let's say their behavior was abominable, which it wasn't. But let's just say that it was. It don't mean shit to a tree. It doesn't take the onus off of Trump for all the things he's done. Well, their their claim to fame is that the FBI is is holding back stuff to, in order to uh, impede uh, a Trump. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see when the full investigation. Yeah, comes yeah, out, yeah. We'll the, the FBI has spent their entire career to, trying to build a reputation on trying to sabotage presidents. Yeah, Come well, on. Uh, you know, J. Edgar. Hoover, you know what? You know, you're a law and order guy, right? And yet here, here Edgar they are, all Hoover. these law and order people, and they're sabotaging the FBI. J. Edgar Hoover was the biggest blackmailer that that ever existed. Absolutely. You know that, that he but had wait files. a minute. Wait a minute. You guys are the are the law and order guys. You're the guys that should be saying, "Oh, don't assail the FBI. They're working in our best be well, maybe behalf." Maybe they need to be assailed. No, no, but wait a minute. Hold on a second. You're the you're the law and order guys, and now you're 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 trying to undermine the very thing that I maintains think, that law and order. I think some. I think from what we know about the FBI and it's it, it, and it's it, it's, and it's, it's just as it's, hypocritical it's, as being a bunch of people who say the national budget is just out of whack and then put it more out of whack. Well, there must have been a reason. And, but, oh, yeah, there uh, must have been a reason. He has added something like 2 or $3 trillion to the national debt, more money we owe to China, uh, to the national debt. And he's the guy who said, oh, I'm going to curb all this. I'm going to bring the national debt down. 
Well, uh, there might have been things waiting in the wings. Oh, that, Jesus. Uh, now you're making excuses for it. If there are things waiting look, in the wings, you'll learn how to back. excuse? You remember the FBI? Do you, do you know? Do you, know do you want to know? Do you want to know what? Do you, 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 you know what Paul FBI Ryan wants to do? You? you know what Paul you know Ryan what? wants to do in order to take care of this national debt? Yeah. He wants Build to, a wall and he charge to get across. He wants to kill Social Security and Medicare. I don't think he'll be able to do that. But, but he wants to. He's going to bring that up as the way of solving it. Yes, Jeff has his, had his hand up. And since he hasn't I, said I much. think Hoover died 40 years ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's time to let it go. Okay. Not necessarily because. I don't think he's active anymore. Yeah, I think, I think Look, the sins of Hoover no longer uh, plague the FBI. Okay. In the Navy, if you start out with a good captain on a ship, it usually continues to be a good ship, no matter how many captains you go through. Uh, the thing about I never heard FBI that, but I'm glad you is, made that one up. Uh, the thing about the FBI is that Hoover ran that thing with iron fist for what, uh, thirty or forty years, and uh, he, you know, he was the only director, and I think until his death. And the thing was, he had files on everybody, and he held people sort of like in a blackmail. You know, there, there, there were files about you, Alex, weren't there? Yes. Didn't the FBI have yeah. a file on you? I, I they still yeah. have them. I never, so, I, I never went under the uh, what do they call it, the Freedom of Information Act, to get them, but I should have. Uh, but I know I mean, that I was okay. I, there was a file on me because I know okay. I, I was on Nixon's list of twelve thousand people to be audited by the IRS. So aren't all of these things abuses of power, and the FBI had abused that power well, for, yeah, but, you know, see, from the beginning of that, time? It, 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 what somebody said here was that was 40 years ago. Okay, doesn't the point matter. we're making about now, okay? How did you say it doesn't matter? The point we're making it's now so is matter. that I don't care how much you want to blame on other people. You've got to also blame Trump for what he's done. It doesn't excuse his bad behavior. The FBI is corrupt. Maybe, you know, you know, because it was started. And maybe on, the White a, House is corrupt. Fiction. Maybe the White maybe House, the is, White corrupt. House is corrupt. It, it Maybe, but it, but the FBI was started and, and was a corrupt organization, uh, you know, from, from its beginning. It's 60, 70 years ago. Hey, you know, that's just, you know, no, when you no, have no. a corrupt organization in the beginning, sometimes, uh, you know, you can hide it for uh -huh, a long time. Uh -huh. and, and so how does this make what uh, the behavior of Donald Trump better? Trump is fighting against the system. Oh, he doesn't like the man. Yeah, you know. He doesn't uh, like the he man, just man. It to the man. You the got least it to transparent the man. fucking president we've ever had, and he's fighting yeah. against the FBI. Hey, hey, he's sticking it to the man. <sighs> yeah, he is. Is the you F better know it, and you're no, one of the men. Right. Hey, I had this idea yeah. about opening up a coffee shop in Berkeley called Stick It to the Man Coffee. I was going to have nuclear-free coffee would be my uh, decaf. You know, it was just one of these ideas. Nuclear? And, yeah. And yeah. How I do you spell every that time, exactly? I, I uh, figured yeah, every it, time it, that they bought coffee and they were sticking it to the man, I was the man and they were giving me the money. <laughs> uh, 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 Jeff, you had your hand up? Yeah, please. Uh, I, I think that... Let's consider the 20 years that the FBI didn't really screw up until Trump became president. Uh, you mean the 20 years that they yeah, were holding what did they do so bad? records? Uh, well, it's 20 years they didn't get caught. Oh, now, now Trump has finally, has finally called and him this, on the this carpet. This is why we all love Phil and why we're happy he's going to be gone on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> uh, hey, I got to go. Uh, first of all, thank you, Phil. Always enjoyable in spite of the fact you make me want to piss my pants. Um, uh, uh, of course, Patrick, who doesn't have to piss his pants because all he has to do is grab it and stab it. Grab it and stab it. Thank you so much. Uh, you, Phil, uh, Rob, thank you so much. Wonderful. And, uh, uh, and of course, uh, uh, Jeff. Jeff, where are you tonight? Are you still in Florida? Yeah, I'm still in Florida. Yeah, still in Florida. I noticed different environs around him. Breaking about the temperature. Anyway, that's uh -huh. pretty. it's pretty cool. Hey, listen, everybody, everybody, I think you should wave goodbye to our audience in order to let them know that you enjoyed them. Thank you to all of you tonight. Been a good show. 
Uh, that's it. I, uh, I, I just got to hang up on these guys and uh, get rid of them uh, so that uh, the next show can use the phone lines. Uh, I have to do that while I'm still on the air. That's the way things go. Anyway, I will be here uh, to begin with next. Jack and Amy do a thing, very good show, called The Intersection. You should call them. And then at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, there's Connections. And then tomorrow night at 9.30, Damien with The Exchange, Jamie and Chaplin. And I'll be back again at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.